Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to start from a different format. We will cover a question first and to figure out the answer, we will go through the topic. This way of learning helps when you are preparing for standardized exam where you have to um, deal with lots of scenario-based questions. So let's begin. A 34-year-old man is evaluated in the clinic due to easy bruising. The patient says even minor trauma causes a bruise and that sometimes he has spontaneous bruising over his legs. He has also been experiencing generalized fatigue, poor appetite and dull pain and stiffness in his lower back and joints at night. The patient has a history of Crohn's disease that required partial bowel resection a year ago. Three months ago, he was treated with oral antibiotics for a perianal fistula. His mother died of colon cancer when she was 56. Physical examination shows several large echymoses on his lower extremities. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? When we go through the first three part of this question, or I must say first two part of this question, it looks more like a, a blood disorder or vitamin deficiency like vitamin K, anticoagulant, uh, factors, problems, something like that. But story changes completely when we enter into the second and third part of this question. As this portion indicates that history of Crohn's disease, partial bowel resection. Okay, it makes sense because partial bowel resection may think, uh, may make you think about malabsorption. Fat-soluble vitamins are not uh, reabsorbing in the GI tract, like vitamin K is not reabsorbing, that is causing easy bruising. Okay, and when you think about the Crohn's disease, you also think about extra intestinal manifestation of Crohn's disease, and you may think about joint problem, osteoarthritis in those patients. So now oh, everything makes sense. Three months ago, she, uh, he was treated with oral antibiotic for a perianal fistula. You can think about, okay, it means some lining problem leads to, like the tract lining problem leads to fistula, as well as his mother died of colon cancer. So there is a family history of colon problems. And there uh, is a chymosis of his lower extremities, that means there is some kind of anticoagulation thing going on in this patient. If we look at the options, there are option A is autoimmune hepatitis, option B is bile acid malabsorption, option C is factor eight deficiency, option D is immune th thrombocytopenic purpura, option E is lipocytoplastic vasculitis. You might think that option C, D, E are confusing options, and you may think about uh, maybe related to Crohn's disease or uh, you may think of option A as an autoimmune hepatitis somehow. I don't know how, but maybe. <laughs> but let's see um, to know more about bile and bile is a malabsorption to figure out the answer completely. So bile is composed of phospholipids, cholesterol, bilirubin, water, and ions. Bile salts is the major one of the major component of the bile why because this is something that make bile a water soluble thing bile salts are composed of bile acids conjugated to glycine or taurine which are actually chemically water soluble that makes bile water soluble that's cool even though it has insoluble substances like phospholipids and cholesterol still this is an interesting mixture of water-soluble and water-insoluble products in our body. So how is cholesterol used in bile acid synthesis? If we zoom in this picture, we'll see that cholesterol is helping in the formation of bile acids. How? There is an enzyme that is 7-alpha-hydroxylase that catalyzes the rate-limiting step of bile acid synthesis. However, this all information is first day, is from first day 2019, page number 368. So you are covering that information in this lecture too. 
So as we look at this diagram, we see that cholesterol, with the help of that uh, the rate limiting step of seven alpha hydroxylase enzyme, is converting into bile acid. That bile is moving around the GI tract and is reabsorbing in the ileum part of the small intestine mostly. So right here. This reabsorption is this is what normally what happens. It helps in reabsorption of vitamins here. But what if someone has Crohn's disease and has small bowel resection? What will happen in this patient, in that patient? In cases of bile acid malabsorption, bile acids are ineffectively reabsorbed in the terminal ileum, which stimulates bile acid synthesis in the liver resulting in increased concentration of both CM7-alpha hydroxylase and fecal bile acid. So what normally going on that reabsorption of bile acid here in the terminal ileum has a negative feedback, uh, to, goes to the liver and tells the liver, okay, you have to stop making bile acid now. We already have enough bile acid. But when somebody has a resection of that part or have Crohn's disease and their terminal ileum got affected, there is no normal reabsorption of bile acid going on. There is no negative feedback for those patients. When there is no negative feedback, then there will be continuous production of bile acid. Where, the, where will all that bile acid will go? All that bile acid will be excreted out in stool in the form of diarrhea, which is not normal. So what is the function of bile normally? The normal, in normal individual, bile help in digestion and absorption of lipids and fat-soluble vitamins. That's very important here because we are about to go through the fat-soluble vitamins. Okay, the second thing is cholesterol excretion. Second function of the bile is the cholesterol excretion. Body's primary means of eliminating cholesterol is bile. So those patients who are having uh, bile acid malabsorption are actually a chances that they are having, they will have hard time in elimination of cholesterol from their body. Then third is antimicrobial activity via membrane disruption. So these are the functions of bile acids. What is the clinical significance? So decreased absorption of enteric bile salt at the distal ileum as in short bowel syndrome or in Crohn's disease, which prevents normal fat absorption when there wouldn't be any normal fat absorption and Secondly, in addition to that, there's calcium, which normally binds oxalate, binds fat instead. So free oxalate is absorbed by the gut, increasing the frequency of calcium oxalate kidney stones. Okay, so it is leading to kidney stones too. If you want to know more about Crohn's disease, so I'm going to attach a link in my description of this video about the lecture about Crohn's disease. Where we discuss this, discuss this mnemonic for Crohn's, think of fat, granny, and an old crone skipping down a cobblestone road away from the rack. Stones are more common in Crohn's. This part is also from first aid. Next, <clears throat> there is a little bit uh, description about Crohn's disease in this lecture because it's important to know the answer. So typically presents with prolonged diarrhea and abdominal pain. Crohn's disease is usually present like that. The terminal ileum is frequently involved in Crohn's disease. Bile acids, which are necessary for absorption of fats and other nutrients, are normally absorbed in the terminal ileum, recycled in the liver, and then reused in the absorptive process. But bile acids are lost with feces when the, when the terminal ileum is inflamed or resected. So loss of bile acids causes fat malabsorption, 
which may lead to deficiencies in fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. What will happen when there will be vitamin K deficiency? There will be easy bruising. Vitamin K is a cofactor for several carboxylase enzymes that are necessary for coagulation factor 2, 7, 9, and 10 activation. Coagulation disorders such as vitamin K deficiency typically result in easy bruising, large hematoma formation in deep tissues and joints, for example, hematrosis, after minor trauma and prolonged bleeding and surgery. So after going through all about vitamin K, about Crohn's disease, after going through uh, what's going on with bile normally and with the uh, resection of a bowel from the GI tract, we are very much clear about the scenario what's going on here. So what is the most likely diagnosis? You can pause the video and choose the answer. Let me tell you the right answer. Right answer is B, bile acid malabsorption. If you guys have any question, then please leave a comment and ask me. I'll try my best to answer your question. Here are some references from where the images that are used in this presentation are taken from. And most of the material is from first aid and from my UWorld notes. So uh, if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel.